Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tim, and I am sick. My eyes are all itchy and watery, I can hardly breathe enough to string two sentences together, but we push on, because as they say, the show must go on. And so, without any further ado, welcome to Tim Talks, the show that's only partially a show, but really is just an excuse for me to talk to some of my very talented friends. And speaking of talented friends, I have another one here with me today, his name is... Ben Leonard. He's the titular character of the show formerly known as Ben Leonard Talks to People. Welcome, sir. I feel welcome now. Titular character. That's probably the uh, that's probably the most formal introduction I've ever gotten. And, I, uh, I've gotten almost zero other formal introductions. So, <laughs> Quite frankly, I really enjoy that word, so I try and slip it in whenever it's I get the chance. It's a great word. It I, really agree, I agree with you. Titular. It's just fun to say. <laughs> so how are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, day off, relaxing, maxing. Nice. Some b-ball outside of the school. I uh, dig it. <laughs> I can tell. GTA I can tell online, you were playing some b-ball because you got the headband going on there. Yeah, right. I, I like in the sweat, but it's actually just wet hair. You know, just rocking just, it out. <sighs> work hard, play hard. You know. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. So, uh, as I said, Ben Leonard records a show, BLTTP, that was formerly known as Ben Leonard Talks to People, with uh, some of our very good friends that, uh, that have been on the show, uh, well, two of which have been on the show, a third one I'm hoping to get on eventually, uh, Franco, and occasionally Dylon, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, Dylon's been on a few times. Dylon was on a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. He, and then the other uh, one is Samurai Corndog, more... also known as Connor. Connor MacDonald, Yeah. He's the, one that, he's the one that I'm going to get eventually. i got to trap him. i got to trap him like a little animal. Uh, I mean, he's not – he looks like a wild animal. I mean, usually, like, the face and the hair. I mean, it looks like he got a, he got a haircut. He got a beard trim. He's looking more clean now. But, yeah, wild animal. Wild I, remember, animal. I remember back when Vine was a thing that everybody did. He did a lot of them uh, involving <laughs> facial hair and mustaches and such. It was very classy. Yeah, Vine was a thing. It's funny that you say that because just the other day I was I was thinking about how Vine just is totally not cool anymore. It was well, cool no. for like I mean, about absolutely three months period, uh, three month period, and now it's just like uh, everybody's trying a little too hard. You know, it's not for me. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing and about this is coming as a person who used it so much. <laughs> yeah, the thing about you know fad technologies like that is while they're very good at forwarding. The advance of technology as a whole, they're very bad about keeping public interest for longer than three or four months. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Tamagotchi. Look at Tamagotchi. You had those things for like three or four months, but they really kind of revolutionized how many people were willing to carry around a mobile game with them. Let's not let's not talk too much crap about Tamagotchi. Okay? I'm not talking any crap about them. I'm saying they really kind of disseminated into the culture, and then they just went away because more and better things came out. But it really kind of helped persuade people who would never carry around something like that to do so. It's kind of nice. Yeah, Tamagotchi was a thing for a while. <laughs> that's a that's a geez. And there was all sorts of different kinds. There was the actual Tamagotchi. Um, there was like the Digimon toys. Oh yeah, like Tamagotchi, and then like I remember when Pokemon Yellow came out, like they had like a Pikachu Tamagotchi. It was just I remember that one. I remember that one. That was all the rage at my school because uh, a whole bunch of the kids that I went to school with weren't necessarily nerdy enough to carry around the Game Boy games. But when the Pikachu one came out, yeah. all the girls just went freaking nuts. And then, of course, when oh, all the popular man. girls start carrying around a little Lord. Pikachu, at it, it's nothing. You, you, you can't do anything. You can't do anything about that. You just might as well accept that your school now loves Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon, man. <laughs> oh. Which, to be fair, I I love it. You know, I love Pokemon. I still have. You see that Game Boy right up there? I, I still have a Who copy doesn't? of Red that I'm able to play on it, and because the battery hasn't died yet. God, please don't let it die anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, I was cleaning out my uh, – I moved in my own house. I moved from one room, like a, w- a wicked tiny room I had in the bottom floor of my house. Now I'm up, upstairs in, like, the biggest room in the house. And I was move- moving all my stuff, and I was looking through things. And I happened to find a bunch of old Game Boy games in a drawer or something. I found, like, my old copy of 
Pokemon Silver. I think I found my co- or no, it was Gold. I found Gold. I found Blue. But the you, thing you is, you like, did I did certainly I, find like... Gold. That's a, that is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome to find that stuff. But then I remember, like, man, I still have like Pokemon Red flowing around and Silver, and I knew I had like I had like all the first three generations of games at some point. And right. I know I didn't get rid of them, so now they're just like they're lost somewhere. And now they, I want to find them because I'm on like a Pokemon craze at the moment. So. Oh yeah, of course. Well, I mean, everybody is with X and Y coming out soon. Yeah, definitely. Like I've been replaying Heart Gold on my uh, my DS recently, my 3DS. I, I put it down, down a little bit for GTA Five, but now I'm like it's. I've gotten the GTA Five for the most part out of my system, so now I can get back to it. And now yeah. that GTA Online has come back out and you can't do anything with it anymore, you can go back to Pokemon. Ah, yeah. I know, I'm making fun. It's probably just, you know, day one jitters and everything of a new system. But who is surprised? Really, who is surprised? I mean, consider... I mean, even Rockstar uh, came out. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Rockstar even came out and said, like, hey, this isn't going to be a perfect launch. Like, we're totally expecting server issues, so... (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah i mean and look at maxis and it, blizzard it, yeah. blizzard couldn't even do it right with freaking uh uh diablo yeah right and so if it's blizzard one of can't these do it yeah Va- <laughs> valve might be able to Val- I, I really hope that valve will be able to with their new consoles and such i mean goodness gracious they've done it very well so far and if it's going off most of the same server yeah. architecture then there's no reason why it shouldn't Oh, I'm going to eat those words later, but it's okay. Like... <laughs> it's, I, yeah, the Valve stuff has been really interesting to me lately. Oh, yeah. Because we all knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming for a long time, but it's just sort of, I don't know. I don't know. It, it feels like a natural progression of what they're doing because Steam is basically like a platform in and of itself at this point. But uh, I don't know what I feel about the controller. I don't well, know how I feel about the consoles at the moment. But. I, here's the thing. The controller, everyone is kind of focused on the fact that uh, uh, the tradition that a console has its specific controller and that's the only thing that you can use for it and there's no other proprietary device that you can use for it because that's the way it's designed. Mm. And that's not the case with the Valve console. Not only can you still use your Xbox gamepad that you love and enjoy – but you can also take apart the one that they give you and make one of your own. You can make it out of a raspberry bloody pie, some Play-Doh, and, and uh, a compass if you damn well want to. You know, I mean, it's they're <laughs> allowing you to be able to make whatever the hell you want. And you can still use a keyboard and mouse. You can use a joystick. You can use everything. They're just giving you another option it's... that gives more precise control in a handheld controller than yeah. thumbsticks. Supposedly. Supposedly. We'll see. Yeah. I'm I'm defending because I like to have hope, not because I actually believe what I'm saying. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically at this point. I feel like with me and the whole thing, I'm excited that Valve's making a console. I guess I, if you want to call it that, I still I'm mm-hmm. still not entirely sure if they're pitching it as a console more so than this is. You know, we're, we created this. You know, this interface, this uh, this platform. The Steam OS and, and Steam OS, yeah. and we're gonna make like there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be boxes that we support for it, and and, uh, and that we put and they're doing the whole big uh, beta on exactly what kind of hardware they should be using for it once they eventually do an actual big release. Mm. But I don't know. It's I'm interested to see someone else get into the console fight. I guess even though I don't like to call it a fight, it just sort of like break big in that way. Because so many people are trying to do it now with the Android consoles, and none of them are sticking. And I feel like it, it's pointless. But with Valve, I feel like they're you know they've built up so much goodwill with Steam over, over the years mm-hmm. that this is like a le- this is a legitimate threat, I think, to some. Of and the, they uh, really do the have enough that's... IP to, if they like like Bernie Burns says, if they really want to establish a market share immediately. They could have a launch lineup that would blow every other console in history out of the water. I mean, what other console could say they have five, exactly. at least, major threes that uh, can come out at the yeah. same time? Because you know they're working right. on it. You know that they have it almost done. You know that they have that thing under lock, key, Fort Knox, and and uh, the, the dead zone cube from Superman uh, all put together. 
<laughs> for yeah, security reasons. Definitely. It's it's it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they exploit that because I feel like at the same time it's like to me it's just kind of baffling because it's such an open platform mm-hmm. and I feel like that might you know that might scare some people just because right. it's like you can have whatever you want and you can do whatever you want and we're just going to give you the OS at the very minimum we're going to supply hardware if you or not supply hardware but we're going to offer hardware if you want it if you don't, don't want to build your own yeah and I think that's that's almost too much and that might I don't it, it, I don't know I don't think it's going to be something that happens and it's going to be huge from the get go just like with any other new console I mean even cuz even like with if Nintendo can't break through with a new console and be successful at the moment I think everybody else will have a hard time doing it. If, if, That's a I'm, fair point. And it's so, certainly not designed for the middle, you know, exactly. for, for the layman. It's certainly designed for someone like you and I who are a little bit more tech savvy and understand the way that things are moving. Uh, especially when you right. consider, I just made, overnight, I made $2.74 on Steam by finally realizing what you can do with the trading cards. Do you know you can sell those things? Yeah. No, I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. You can go, you can take them. You can go and sell them for an appropriate cent value. There are people who buy these ready things for some reason. <laughs> and I now have $2.79 <laughs> in my Steam wallet that I can use to buy another ready game if I want to. Yeah. It's – it's. I don't know. I think that the, from what I'm hearing about, like, their plans for consoles and releasing, like, tiered hardware, stuff like a $100 model for more uh, casual gaming – and like a three hundred dollar model for something more high end, I mm-hmm. think the the appeal is going to be there because they know that everybody supports Steam, and this is a you know a, an offshoot of Steam. So it's right. not going to be a situation with the Wii U like there's not enough third party support, which I think is a big thing with the Wii U is that there really isn't. Uh, but at the same time, it's also got that you know that appeal of being you know extremely cheap compared to the Xbox One, the PS4. Yeah. Which are Especially there, if they're like going to be able to put out multiple dollars. consoles at multiple price points and, you know, power levels, as I said, and, you know, if, uh, everything. If you can get the word out there, there's so much appeal. Mm-hmm. If they can get the word out there, I think they definitely have a shot. But, at, at you know, even at this point in time, Steam isn't like a home name, you know, like Valve isn't a home name. Like maybe Portal, maybe Left 4 Dead, but, you know, yeah. even Half-Life, even Half-Life isn't something like you could talk to. Anybody on the stream, like, do you know what Half Life is? It's like, is it something to do with chemistry or whatever? It's like, no, it's a video game, you know. Right. And and they're huge franchises for sure. That's not you know downplaying them, but at, at, to me, but, it's like the the biggest problem Steam's gonna have or Valve's gonna have with the Steam OS, the Steam machines, all that, is just raising awareness to a even an even broader market than they already have. And I think they're trying to. I think they're well, really yeah, trying to. With some I, of the I think so too, and I think they're trying to speed up the process of kind of getting that name recognition because you're right they're having to compete with someone like nintendo where even yeah. your mom who didn't know what the hell it was called your sega genesis a nintendo yeah basically and you know then, so that's the name everyone knew but at the same time you know with the name like nintendo and the sales that they're not getting at this point you know it's anybody's ball game it's really anybody's mm-hmm. ball game you know i'm excited to see i not i don't like to use the word competition but more the con- no i'm glad i'm market. glad the console wars are back on I've been I, I, I've been anxious for it. I don't there like needs to, call to be change. Console wars because I feel like that's too negativity. I think you know, because you get the people who are just like, "Shut up, asshole." PS4 for life or yeah. whatever, and it's like yeah. uh, it's not the way it should be. You know, you should just be supporting the fact that there's friend. I don't I, I live I and let live in that case. I mean, yeah, you know? yeah, friendly like, competition, growth because that because you know if if the 360 or the one has like the monopoly on the market, then you're not going to see any growth. You're right. just gonna constantly see the same stuff that people are already buying, so I, I, you know, I give it to Valve, and I'll even give it to Nintendo for trying to shake things up a bit and creating stuff that's going that tries to appeal to everybody in different ways. But I don't know; it's a, it's a weird time. It's a weird with a new generation. It's always a weird, weird time with consoles. It really is, and so all we can do is kind of hold on for the ride and hope for the best. Yes, basically. but you gotta love it. I love living in the future, don't you? Yeah. We I mean, this, with the the Oculus Rift and and oh, yeah. all the things that that brings about and mm-hmm. stuff like being able to have PC powered games while sitting on my couch. Imagine, mm-hmm. cloud imagine saving. Cloud the possibilities. Saving is pretty fantastic. I think cloud savings are really big thing, 
and not not just because it's being conclu- included on everything and like everybody's pushing it as a big thing it's just that it is you know this ability um, that you can have your entire game uh library just in the air and you can go anywhere and you can access it from any xbox or whatever like that you know oh, yeah. streaming it's, it's it's interesting but i don't know it, imagine a game like hunter if you will do you remember that uh the that game where there was an invisible hunter who was running around and everyone was trying to run away from him. I, mm, it's not, okay. I, I, I remember something similar, but I, 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 I it might not about. be called Hunter, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with it. Imagine someone sitting on a couch playing with the Oculus Rift, being the invisible guy, and then there are four yeah. other people sitting in the room, split screen on the television, running from him. Yeah, <laughs> it's there, there's a lot of possibility there. I hope the Oculus Rift gets console support. I really do. Oh I think, yeah. You know, more so, more so than something like the tablet-based Wii U, we're really yeah. talking about capability for true asymmetric gameplay, which you know yeah. is always awesome. I mean, look at a game like Dungeon Land, which was on uh, Steam here not too long ago, yeah. where you had one guy being a dungeon master, torturing three other people by spawning monsters and creating yeah. traps, and <laughs> that's like Dun- like Dungeons and Dragons, basically, and that's something that. I know it's not the it's not the idea I had, but I know a lot of people had the idea at the very same time of why don't they just make a Dungeons and Dragons game for the Wii U? Perfect. That would sell like hotcakes. It really would. Yeah. Stuff like that. I'm really into asymmetrical gameplay. I think it's a a cool idea. It doesn't get implemented enough on these, you know, on the current platforms just cuz they're not really built for that kind of stuff and there's not really yeah. a lot of different inputs and it, it it just doesn't work that way, but I think with stuff like the Oculus Rift and even stuff like the gamepad for the Wii U, I think there's a lot of potential there to do interesting things because, you know, Call of Duty's fun, but you're all doing the same thing, you know? Exactly. I, I like the idea of... It's, it's, it's basically like taking the idea of, like, a class-based shooter and just sort of exploding on it, you know, and, and just making yeah. it into something even bigger. And, and it, it works in some cases. It's not going to work in some others, but it, it, it's definitely something that they need to try at least. I Absolutely, think it's, uh, there's nothing it's wrong just... with taking a risk, and well, there is a lot of things wrong with falling <laughs> flat on your face by taking yeah. a risk. But at least you can try and learn something from the experience. Yeah, basically, because you know, even still, everybody thought the Wii was going to be stupid, and the Wii was huge for a while, for a long time, and until still, Nintendo it, quit putting out good software for it. Why doesn't even that the hardware got yeah. awful? It was that the games that were they were putting out were just terrible and were misusing well, the technology. And well the hardware I mean the hardware was stuck in standard. I think I think that was a big thing. I, that was one of the things I had against the Wii is like it was stuck in the standard dev era. And it's like yeah. that was probably the biggest blunder with it is that they didn't take the time to sort of or even like consider the idea that H D was going to be so big, you know? And and, and now Who knew out, people would want to see pixels a, better. Yeah, and and now they come out with a, a powerful HD uh, console on the Wii U that's supposed to be their next gen offering. Everybody's like, nah, it's kind of like matching up to current gen stuff, and we're not really looking at it yet right now. It's like you're killing them, you're killing them. And, and I don't know if I can the blame solely on Nintendo, and I don't know if the blame is more so on the people who aren't risking or making taking the risks of putting out content on that platform. But I don't know. It's uh, Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, it's exasperating, <laughs> especially for. As big of a fan of Nintendo properties as I am, I'm, yeah. I mean, as we probably are, you know, yeah. I mean, everybody. Loves I've, them. I've, yeah, I grew up playing them, and now, I, and I want to play them more. I want to, I want to play another Metroid game that doesn't suck nuts. Yeah, right. I want another Star Fox game. Yes, That's all I want. I want another oh, Star Fox game. Please. <laughs> I, I've been waiting for a Star Fox game since the GameCube. You know, like, and the last one was still pretty decent. Star Fox Assault was good. It was it was a good like return to form kind of. I, I mean, the, I don't understand. It's like you can't just delegate those characters for Smash Brothers, man. You just gotta you gotta make another game. You gotta make yeah. another game. You get another yeah. risk. You yeah. Know? I it's, mean, quite frankly, would buy it because it's a Nintendo problem. I mean, seriously, think. Of, I, I, I there's going to come a day where something's gonna happen and Nintendo's gonna dissolve, and it's not gonna be bad. Yeah. Because all the properties are going to get absorbed by all the other companies, mm-hmm. and one day we're going to get to see a a uh, Infinity or a, God uh, Insomniac version of Zelda, and and you know yeah. 
something really amazing being done with these properties. I just, I, yeah. I know that that is a nihilistic view of it, but if Nintendo isn't going to do something with them, then please pass them off to someone who will. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's... And Take it's a note from like, George Lucas. Pass it off to someone <laughs> who will. It's like, it's not, I don't think it's a situation where they're not doing stuff with it. I think it's just that they're doing the wrong things or too much with the same things. Obviously... Mario and Zelda are the are the you know they're the money makers they're the they're the breadwinners obviously because they keep going back to them and you know Donkey Kong's making a comeback and Kirby's sort of floating around and you know there I mean and there was a lot of Kirby's games. epic yarn is the only thing close to something new in the last bit I mean they and, just announced and... the, they just announced the new Kirby game for the 3DS today really yeah so and I mean. And I know they're, and honestly, it's it's really weird because I think the 3DS is fantastic, and there's a lot of great games coming out for it or have come out for it. A lot mm. of them I haven't been able to play yet, but I want to. And you know, and also a lot of them are Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, the remake. So I mean, you know, there's a lot of ports and stuff like that. A lot of yeah, remakes, a lot of rehashes I mean, that are coming out on Nintendo I, as well. Well, yeah, it's it's true, and stuff like New Super Mario Brothers, which isn't a direct rehash, but it's basically like we we can make a, a quick buck off. But this, so we're gonna make this. You know, right. it's kind of soulless. But at the same time, it's like the you know I like to see them. At the it's it's weird because at the same time they're doing new things. Like uh, you know they're doing a top down Zelda and they haven't done a top down Zelda for a while and stuff yeah. like that. And they're and they're taking a lot of leaps with Pokemon with X and Y and and I don't know. It's it's again it's like with with, with Valve. It's not fresh. You know, to me it's like it's not frustrating because it's bad but it's frustrating because it's good but i don't know how good it's gonna be right but with nintendo it's just like it has so much potential and they have so much they have to live up to and at this point they're just sort of the drop well, ball i think the problem comes from the fact that nintendo thinks that they are trying new and radical things and then when those yeah. quote new and radical things that they think are so new and radical tend to fall short of the new and radical expectations that everyone has and wants they Think yeah. that uh, think of it as a commercial failure, and then go back to the ways of old because yeah, yeah. that's what worked before, it's... right? Yeah. Kind of disheartening. Mm. But what are you going to do? Except either they'll learn or they won't, and that premonition that I had before will come to pass. Unfortunately, we shall see. Yeah, it's it's a very real possibility, and I think people are sort of coming to that point now. Uh, that this idea that in two to three years nintendo may no longer be they may go the way of thq you know it's like it's very real and at that point all i can say is i hope they all go to a good home yeah <laughs> or at least exactly their, or don't get split off you know i mean with nintendo i feel like it, it's an ex expensive nut but it's one that you kind of want all of it you know if you're gonna yeah. absorb a company or take its properties you, you know it, it Getting Mario would be nice, but getting Mario and everything else would be better. So oh, yeah, I just absolutely. hope that if that happens, it goes to the right person. So <coughs> We shall see. Yes. And hopefully it all disseminates in the right fashion. But uh, enough about that. Let's get on to the proper topic here. You and your show. <laughs> uh, oh. I, we got on a major, major tangent of about the good, uh, good 30 tangent, minutes over though. here. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we had a lot of good insights into the way you, you and I both think about video games, and that's always wonderful. But uh, let's do a little bit of... Horse, uh, advertising like a shameless whore for your show. I thought you were going to say, let's do a lot of horse shit. And I'm just like, all right, it's fine with me. Let's do it. Let's do some horse shit. Yes. No, uh, so Ben Leonard Talks to People was the original name of the show, and it's now called BLTTP. Mm -hmm. uh, how did it get started? Yeah. Uh, it started way back in August of last year. Um, I had tried to do a couple podcasts before this one. Uh, I, I was invited to be on one by a couple friends, and then I tried to start my own a little bit after that. But they both kind of dissolved quickly, and they didn't really gain a lot of traction. But I like podcasts. I like the format. It's, you know, the you know online radio show. You know, it, a great place for opinionated people who feel like they have something to say to get on there. And sometimes mm -hmm. people have something to say. Sometimes they don't. But you know, <laughs> it's an interesting platform. It's something I like. You know, I always really enjoyed listening to and eventually being a part of. So. I just had this idea, like, man, I just want to do a podcast, you know, and I want to yeah. do one that's more so, not so focused on me, but, like, I'm the key component of it, and, you know, it's not really relying too much on other people to constantly be available and stuff like that. Kind of like what you, basically very similar to what you do now with Tim Talks and stuff like that, where you just kind of have guests on every week, and, you know, you, you variate, and you just talk about whatever, 
And yeah. that was the original idea, and that's why it was Ben Leonard Talks to People. Because uh, it was supposed to be me talking to whoever was on that week. <laughs> and um, we recorded the first four episodes in August, me and uh, Franco, Connor, and then I did two episodes with my friend Devin. And mm-hmm. uh, we put those out in September, and the first two, maybe just the first episode, like it got, I put it up on SoundCloud, and it got enough traction to the point where I'm like, all right. I think this is going to go somewhere, so I'm going to throw it on Lipson. And I put the money in, and I said, all right, let's get this on iTunes. Let's let's try and do this. And then Connor's on, and Franco's on, and then, you know, whatever. And it just kind of grows from there. And uh, it just got to a point, you know, where it was getting popular, and people were enjoying it. And it was, you know, it was definitely going in places that I was hoping it would go in um, secretly in my mind, not thinking, mm-hmm. like, oh, it's totally not going to fail. Yeah. Uh, but, um... Well, I mean, but you you kind of have to have that attitude to, would... to keep going every week or else you're going to kind of peter <laughs> out eventually. Exactly. You kind of have to you have to have confidence in what you're putting out because if you don't, no one's going to watch. But um or listen or whatever. But uh mm-hmm. basically the the podcast sort of got to the safe point uh where I was always having Connor and Franco on like very frequently. So I just decided, well, you guys are on all the time. Why don't you just become hosts on the show let's do this together the three of us and it might not be the three of us every week but it's definitely going to be some combination of the two of us and like a guest or the three of us and a guest or two of us and two guests whatever yeah so that is so that was back when we were still ben larry talks to people and then earlier this year we sort of you know i came to this realization that it was a bad name to have ben larry talks to people because it wasn't an accurate representation of the product that you were getting and I felt like Anymore. it was less of, yeah, it was less about me and it was more about the three of us and you know yeah, we still have guests on pretty frequently and stuff like that, but it shouldn't be focused on one person when that one person is just one part of the whole. You know, right. it definitely wouldn't be what it is without Connor or Franco for sure. So, I said to Connor, I'm like, "All right, let's come up with a different name. We should seriously change the name. Let's change the name. It's a good idea. Let's do, let's do it. Let's change the name." And we talked about it and we we're like, "I don't know." Like we talked about doing it, and then we're just like, "All right, let's change it." I don't have any ideas for a name. <laughs> like, we, just, <laughs> we didn't have any good ideas. We didn't have any anything that we legitimately thought would would have been quality. You know, you never want to turn it over to the fans because nine times out of ten, the fans don't have the best ideas. So we're yeah. just like, "How about this? How about we just shorten it to the initials? Let's shorten it to BLTTP. It's a way to represent." what's come before where we started but at the same time it's supposed to be it's like a name that means nothing uh to compare it i um i don't know if you ever heard of them crooked vultures the band dave grohl you know that oh, yeah, big yeah, yeah. super project uh of, of musicians dave grohl josh homie uh john paul jones and they got together and they and they picked that name when they were recording and doing that first album they did because it literally meant nothing and so the way to us like the way that i look at it with blttp it's a name that means nothing it can be yeah I mean, well, I mean, it, want, like RTX. RTX what, doesn't actually mean Rooster Teeth Expo, even though most people say it does. It RTX people, just stands for RTX. Yeah, it's Rooster Texas or whatever. You know, it's like yeah. it's whatever you want it to be. You know, it doesn't have to. It can mean whatever it has to mean at the moment. You know, bacon, exactly. lettuce, tomatoes, toilet paper, perfect. That's exactly what it is. You're right. But you know, lit <laughs> to the pack. And, uh, yes, exactly, exactly. That's what it is. So yeah. we changed it and. From there on out, you know, we, we've operated since then using that name and, and just kind of kept to that same style that we eventually grew grew accustomed to, which is Connor and I or Franco and I or the three of us just kind of BSing every week about the stuff we like, you know, which tends to be movies or games yeah. or, or, you know, comics or whatever it is. Whatever so. games you're playing that week, whatever just happens to come to mind that, that has been bugging you. Yeah, yeah. We, like, there's... I It's, it's really weird because... You know, I, we've been doing it for a year now. We do, we've been doing it for over a year, and I'm totally comfortable with it. Like, I was kind of comfortable with it from day one. But, uh, I, you know, as time goes on and you're working with the same people over a long period of time, you do, you know, get that chemistry going. And, um, you know, and, and now it's like every week. I don't I don't try to, to prepare too much about what I want to say on the podcast because I feel like then it comes off a little too forced. But, you mm-hmm. know, people who long-time listeners will know we sort of have, like, the general fallbacks of, uh, fuck, we don't know what to talk about. Uh, what did you play this week? Uh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, what did you watch? Did you watch any movies? Did you go to the movies? Something. Please, we're dying here. So, 
But uh, well, I mean, you gotta have know, fallback topics to go on to because yeah. eventually the conversation does run dry. There are only so many well springs of knowledge that yeah. you can bring forth in about an hour before Depends you're like, on... yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, basically, and 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 the, it's the the worst times is when it starts off like that. Like, hey, everybody, welcome to BLDDP. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that happens off not too often, but often enough. But um, we we make it work. We definitely. Yeah. You know, even if we stumble for about forty-five minutes, for that last twenty-five, it's it gets real good. Just stay you pressed it. on, you soldiered on, and hopefully the listeners will do the same. So speaking of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and it's funny that you. No, go around right ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, as time's gone on, we, you know, as our chemistry has developed as a group, we're we're getting more and more comfortable with various different subjects, and I, I think back. To the episode that you you said you talked about you know how we've had dial on on earlier and uh we the most recent episode we did with dial on i think that was 54 i want to say 54 Mm -hmm. uh it was like it was super long it was like a two-hour podcast and for about the first hour of the podcast we just bullshitted about just the randomest stuff like we talked about like playing sports in school and getting hurt and stupid stuff from when we were kids and it's like that's sort of where I want the podcast to go eventually is just sort of, yeah, we talk about the stuff we enjoy, but, you know, definitely natural conversation things, you know, stuff like yeah. that is what I really enjoy. And, and a lot more I natural stream of stuff. conscious conversational stuff yeah. is always more fun to listen to anyway, because then you get to kind of experience a friend dynamic and maybe feel included and involved yeah. and like you belong there. And yeah. it's good. That's an excellent way to foster an audience is to kind of bring them into the exactly. conversation, which... One reason why I think it's so important that I have both of our views here on the interviews. Uh, I I think it's kind of nice to not only be able to see not only the person who is speaking, but the person who's listening. And so you can kind of tell how engaged the person listening is by their face or by their motions or actions and, you know, feel involved. Feel like you're right there with us. Because you are. You're going to be right here with me. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's hard to uh it's hard to convey that on a podcast for sure when you're doing it just audio because you yeah. have to I find myself constantly whenever Connor is going on one of his extremely long stories which he has so many of and that's not to say they're bad he just has them you know I whenever like I can I'm doing a lot of mm-hmm's and and yeahs because I want people to understand that yes I am listening to him it's not like okay so he's gonna talk oh my mic so he's nice. gonna talk for this long period of time and uh, let me fix that real quick. He's going to talk for a long period of time. I'm just going to cut my audio out. You don't even need it, you know? Yeah. Uh, the way I edit it, actually, We'll be back in 2.30. It's very, yeah, it's uh, it's very fly on the wall. That's that's very much how I view, like, my the editing style for it. It's very minimalistic to, to sound, make it sound too artistic. I chop now, off... Now, is that an artistic it. choice or a lazy <laughs> choice? I mean, it started out as... It's it's a lazy choice for sure. It's there's definitely a matter of laziness in it. Obviously, the oh, stuff no, I, I cut out, I cut it out. I completely but, uh, understand. I have enough problems <laughs> editing this thing together that if I tried to edit it for content too, it would take yeah. two weeks for each individual episode to come out. I'm gonna be lucky right. if this comes out by next Wednesday. So you know, uh, work yeah. more, more work. Right. Why make more work for yourself than you have to? And so if if it ends up being good enough that usually people can struggle through the slow bits to get to the good parts where you do actually say yeah. something kind of witty or insightful or at least somewhere in the middle right. between those two, then, uh, you know, yes, anything you can do to further that experience. Right. And um, obviously if there's, like, major stuff that we need to cut out, I go and cut it out, silence it, whatever it may be. But normally it's just sort of I chop off where we sync our audio tracks at the very beginning because the way we record, we all record our own separate audio and I chop off the ending at a funny point or at the point that seems right, and then I throw the intros on, and intro, outro, whatever, and just it goes out. Because I like it better that way because it does feel like it's just a sort, sort of the natural conversation. You're getting the whole vibe of it. Um, right. The mic bumps that are there or whatever, like maybe the peaking audio here and there. It's stuff I could do and stuff I could be very, you know, like very meticulous, uh, precise, about. Yeah, meticulous and precise about. But I think at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. And as long as it sounds good enough, or not good enough, but it sounds fine and the audio levels are good and it's all natural, it's, 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 uh, it works well with me. And I'm glad you talked about you know, the idea of you know, trying to make it feel more natural and comfortable for the listener. 
because in the way that you record it, in the way you, you know, like you said, the, uh, having everybody see the two people talking and stuff like that. For me, it's something I want to bring more into the, the podcast itself because even for me, like, I, I enjoy doing the podcast the way we do them. It's really the only way we can do them for the most part via Skype, mm-hmm. um, like most people will record a podcast uh, on the internet these days. But um, I know Connor and I actually live in the same state. We both live in New Hampshire. Oh, crap. Don't find us. Don't oh, come boy. looking for us. They're uh, coming to get you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All of them, all two of them. Um, Wait, fans and, uh, or NSA people? Both. That's that's the. Uh, uh, well, what are you talking about? NSA, the government shut down. Silly. Oh yeah, fair point. <laughs> fair point. We're safe. Let's We're safe for like that. two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Connor and I live in the same state. We actually live like where he lives normally when he's not at school, and where I live is like an hour away. So it's a, it's a quick drive. I've been over there a couple times, and uh, you know what I was talking to him about the other day is the idea of like when he gets back from school. When he's all done, like maybe have me come over and let's record the podcast together. We've only ever recorded the podcast together in the same room twice. Hmm. Uh, and the first time was really awful. We had one microphone and it was four of us stuck in a basement in New York at Franco's house. <laughs> and uh, it was all right. But at the same time, we were tired and we did it just to do it. Yeah, uh, it. that sounds like a very pleasant experience. I bet the yeah, room was very it- gamey by the time you were done. Oh, man, it was a uh, it was weird. It, it was so because the audio quality wasn't great. Great. And it yeah. was the, for me, like that, just doing that one back on, I was like, we could have done better, guys. Well, I mean, <laughs> and, uh, you, you have to record a podcast like they did in the 70s show, where everyone just kind of flash frames around yeah, the table. Just had a camera set in the middle on like a turntable. Just, yeah. Okay. Spun it. Who's talking next? All right, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> that would actually be hilarious. And then well, was, I mean, no, the the way to do, you would do that in editing. You would just have four cameras going at all times. So that way you would even catch, like, if uh, Franco was over there picking his nose or whatever, sorry, Franco, you were just the first name I pulled. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you catch that too and be able to edit that in. Yeah, and like maybe putting a few Hitchcock swipes in there. So just oh, to like, oh, just get... yeah, yeah. If you don't know what a Hitchcock swipe is, you clearly are not a film nerd. But uh... we're designing a show right here, sir. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're designing a show. Yes, this actually sounds like a great idea. But right? um, other but yeah. You know, I have a mixer. I have a mixer that I can record audio into. It's not. I don't work on Ooh, USB that fancy. much anymore. It's fancy. But, uh, you know, I just got to buy a couple mics, and I was talking to Carter. I'm like, I should just come down, and we should just record the podcast together in the same room. Mm-hmm. Like, because the way you can do it, you know, it, to me, it feels more natural that way. I feel like we can work off each other better because we're just sitting there in the same room looking at each other talking. Of course. Talking. And, uh, and yeah, I, I think it would be an interesting thing to try. And, like, yeah, at the same time, you can even, like, batch record a bunch. Just take a day and, like, let's record for, like, have, however long we can record. And we'll cut them up and we'll put them out. And uh, I don't know. It's, like, I think people are so used to the topicalness of a podcast these days where it's, like, constantly about something that you're that's going on right now. That's but currently people, happening. Here's, yeah. here's the new content that you need to absorb yeah, for this week. We're, we're going to talk about all the new announcements because you guys got to know about the new announcements because you don't know already. Right. Um, and as much as I love giving my opinion on that kind of stuff, I think, you know, I, I've always wanted us to get to a point where we can just sit down and we can record, like, three and I can chop them up and then they're done and I don't have to worry about it for a while. You know, that that's just sort of what, like, that's always sort of my end game or not my like my my vision like let's just get together we'll record for a couple hours and like two or three and then we're good for a few weeks or something yeah. like that yeah because i think that way you're getting i think yeah you're not getting the topical stuff but you're definitely getting you know i think better content just because we can work off of each other you know it, better and it, i don't know it's something i want to do and i'm sure it's something we'll do once connor's done with school but uh i hope it works out because it's a uh, it's one of those things again, going back to like what I thought of from the start. You know, we batch recorded the first four. Why not? Why not do it back? Why not do it now? Let's do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, real quick, we're gonna speed past this. I want to plug the RTX panel that y'all did this yeah. year because that thing was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a video of it available over on Rooster Teeth's channel. Uh, I'll put a little you know sprig of it down there while we're discussing it very very quickly here. Uh, <laughs> So you had a panel at RTX. It was, uh, what was it, Sunday, I think it was? It was Sunday. I think it was like at 2 o'clock, I think, 2 to 3. I happened to sneak in during the last 15 minutes because uh, I had pulled the muscle in my leg, and Jack begged me to go sit down or told me. The muscle. 
Yeah. Oh, you hush. <laughs> uh, told me to go sit down for a minute or else he was going to tell me to go home for the day. And I said, okay, fine. I'm going to go up to the panel. So I hobbled hey, my limp ass up there. Jeez. Right? Right? <laughs> So I hobbled my limp ass up there and made it up there just as uh, the lightning round was beginning, which is probably my favorite part of the show. Uh, how did that come about? The the lightning round itself or the panel? <laughs> the panel. The panel. Uh, it was something we did on a whim. Uh, we They were looking for RTX panel submissions. We're like, hey, we know some people in the company, and we've had people on. You know, we've had Ray on at that point. I'm sure we've had... Like we and at the time we were planning to have Andrew on and Michael on, just a lot of the IB folk who, of course, are very popular. I've and, asked uh, Ray to be on my show, but he has yet to respond. What a douche! He's I a little know. douche. Oh, I know. No, well, to be fair, GTA <laughs> Five and GTA Online, so I understand. Nah, nah, he sucks. But yeah. uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, we we you know, and, and we were like I said, we were we were friends with people who are in the company or really are very you know involved in the community. Like we have a lot of. We're like we're we're pretty you know rooted in there, and and we thought well f- this is probably the only convention we'll ever have a real shot at getting a panel at. Let's let's apply. Let's see if we can get one. You know, let's see right. if they're that that desperate for content that, that they'll include us. If they are so, that desperate, I like yeah. it. Yeah, no, that's a pretty good way to phrase it as you're yeah. going into something like that. I that's a good attitude to have because I will say this: then you're prepared for the worst, and when you actually get the warm reception that you guys got, it had to feel amazing. Yeah. We were we were very prepared not to get it, and uh, I'll tell the, the story real quick. Um, when I we sent out we applied for the panel, we were using a different email address, and then we switched names and we changed the name of the podcast. And I actually deleted that email address and started a new one, so they didn't have any way of contacting us. But luckily, luckily Barb went out of her way, Barbara, uh, and she DM'd me on Twitter, yeah. but I couldn't DM her back on Twitter because she doesn't follow me. So I, t- <laughs> I talked to her on RT. And she was like, all right, we need, you know, what's a way to contact you? Give me the email address. She's like, all right, that's cool. By the way, you guys are in for your panel. We'll email you the time, whatever. And I'm like, cool. Oh, you know, by the way. A, <laughs> lovely by little way, incidental to throw in there. Thank you. Yeah, you might want to note that. Um, yeah. But it was, it was cool. It was a really cool feeling to know we had it. Because it was, you know, I love going to conventions. I like going to panels. Not panels all the time, but, you know, just a few. So I like yeah. the idea of that, you know, we could get a shot at it. You know, we're... we're, we're we're kind of put not center stage, but we're getting some attention and we're getting a chance to do something really cool. And then, uh, but again, you know, like you said, even if it goes terribly, it's, it's whatever. We didn't even expect to get it. So might as well just give it a shot to right. do it. You know, what's, what's life without taking some chances. Huh. So, uh, and we, so we did it and you know, the, as the panel went on, the, the room got fuller and fuller, not to capacity, but about half full. I think we said that we could just gauge it by that. And by the time we got to the lightning round, we were doing all that. You know, as things went along, it just got better and better. And by the I end would of it, enjoy you know, seeing er- the analytics from the stream numbers of how many people tuned in after the podcast started, as opposed to how many were there when it started. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it would be interesting. Uh, to, I, I almost kind of don't want to know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, for sure. Like I, I, we we started, you know, like a lot of good podcasts that we do. It's like we started out slow and we built, we built, and we built, and. It was just a matter for us, honestly, to be comfortable with that situation. It was something new to right. all of us. I mean, I think Franco had been on a panel the year before for Community Hunter stuff, but me and Connor, this was like our first time in that kind of scenario. So we were just kind of, you know, finding our bearings a little bit. But by the right. lightning round and, you know, Connor is up and running around and we were just all having a good time and I was screwing my lungs out. We were just like, all right, you know, by the end of it, when you're getting the applause, like when you get applause, that's pretty cool. I, it I, I really mean, is. that was just one thing. The applause was cool. The fact that people came up to the table to have us sign things was weird but cool. <coughs> and it was just like – and then the, the, the weirdest but best part uh, was afterwards throughout the rest of the day. And, uh, you know, it was just coming – a lot of us coming – a lot of people coming to us like, oh, we went to the Mega 64 panel that was scheduled at the same time as you guys. But we heard yours went extremely well. From hearing from a lot of Guardians that, you know, word was spreading around like the, the thing went really well and that people really enjoyed it. And, and I know somebody said like, oh, man, that was like the panel to see if you missed it, like you missed a good one yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like I don't say that stuff to brag about it because I think there's not a lot to brag about. It doesn't sound as genuine coming from me. But just hearing that stuff being thrown around, it was cool. It was just it was it was it does. pretty damn it awesome. It really does so, make man, you feel it, it, good. And I'll say this to kind of close yeah. out this section of the show. There is yeah. no drug 
that makes you feel as good as being a performer and actually being able to do what you do in front of an audience. Yeah, it for sure. gives you such a feeling, such a high, a genuine high that that alone is what drives you to do the next performance and then better. So yeah. Ben Immediately Linder, afterwards. Yeah, I was, yeah the uh, Ben Leonard Talks to People panel for 2014 is going to be even better and bigger <laughs> and more awesome and including a wavy arm inflatable tube man, ideas. apparently. I still think we should do a musical next year. That's like my secret ambition. Let's do a musical. It's never going to happen. Really, I really kind of want to do something, something staged like that involving – yeah, you know something. Not too overperformed, I feel like, because when you when you get to a point when you're planning out, you know, a panel to the nth degree, yeah, you're losing sort of what makes it fun and that like that live and improv you sort of feel. But but then again, none know, of us are, Bro- uh, are Wayne Brady. Yeah, that's true. So uh, uh, none of us wrote who's lying to talk. Who <laughs> you know the name of that show? Who's lying? Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got a we got a lot of ideas. We have a lot of ambition for it and you know the court you know it, it seems like they're gonna want to have us back for next year so we're, we're hell yeah off. so that's gonna be freaking awesome so uh now that we come towards mm-hmm. the end of our program unfortunately we're sitting in around about an hour uh i've always enjoyed the inside the actor studio method on ending on a questionnaire and so i too mm-hmm. reappropriated the proust questionnaire to uh my own devious methods and uh it goes a little bit something like this Ben, what's your favorite word? Butthole. Honestly, butthole has become my favorite word lately. It's just fun to say. It just rolls off the tongue for me, butthole. Titular There's a lot of good, good consonants in there. I, yeah. I, I, I have a theory that consonants are funny. Vowels are less so. Like, whale yeah. is not funny. But <laughs> sperm whale? That shit's funny. Sperm whale is pretty funny. But yeah, <laughs> I, but, butthole is a funny word just because... You know, when you when you get to that point when you're swearing a little too much in your dialogue, when you're talking to people, it's like when you when you can come up with something a little more PG and have it, you know, still get a good funny reaction. That's good. And that's what butthole is to me. It's very PG. So what's your least favorite word then? Um, hmm. Least favorite word. I think it's literally now. And, and it, because. It just gets literally around, is literally so. your least favorite word. Li- this is literally my literally favorite word, or literally least favorite word, or whatever. But yeah, Dig it's it. uh, and it's like I'm catching myself doing it now, and it's unlike a word like like where you're basically pronouncing the comma in your sentence or whatever. You know that I'm that's a lot harder to sort of get out of your speech pattern if it's too ingrained in there. But with the word like literally, you can think of a better adjective. I mean, you should be able. There to. are plenty out there. You can you you know. I honestly, I would prefer honestly or to get compared to literally. So, you know, yeah. yeah. At least it's less used. It just sucks. Yes, for sure. So, uh, what hero do you, or heroine do you identify with? Uh, I think I'd have to say Iron Man. I like, you know, obviously there's the likeness or the likable factor in him, which, you know, uh-huh. the art, the art. No, 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 no. You said likeness. There's the like, likeness listen, factor. I that don't you happen look to like look like Robert Tony Stark. Jr. That's what nah. you said. That is what you said first, nah, and that's the answer we're going to go with. Not what I to say, though. Not <laughs> what I meant to say. But, uh, you know, he's super likable because of the movies and whatnot. What, of course. Sure. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I identify with the, the idea of this, you know, this person being billed as being something, but, you know, having having to try and almost, like, reinvent themselves. You know, he's known as this, you know, this billionaire genius playboy thl- uh, philanthropist, and, you know, now he has to be a hero, and he wants to be a hero, and he wants to change his ways and stuff like that. And I can identify. Now he has that to idea. resemble you. <laughs> yes, Robert Downey Jr. needs to be more like me. Don't tell him. That. Uh, but, I'll support it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 Iron Man Four, I totally, make it. Yeah, I totally, uh, I totally, you know, can level with the idea of, oh, okay, this is what how, how people take you and how people think of you, but you really want to be taken in a not more seriously, but you know, want to be you know, consider better something life. different than what you actually are. Yeah, yeah, so... I yeah, I can totally sure. dig that. Well, what about a villain? What villain do you identify with? This is a harder question, for sure. Because <laughs> there's so many good villains out there, but really so many are. are they really are. Uh, hmm. I want to say, like, 
uh, are you going for like a super villain or just like a villainous person in, or character in general? I make you know, no rules other than the question that, that I have asked. Oh, I kind of have to say Walter White for the same reason because he's okay. you know he's he's can for all his very life, very apropos of years, you. you know. Yeah, very uh, timely. Exactly. Um, but uh yeah like he's all like for 50 years he was considered like this one person but he's just kind of sick of it and he was pent up so he decided to make meth so that's what i'm trying to say everybody is that i make meth but, sure yeah no you're no, gonna get a bowler hat and a nice little goatee yeah, exactly. and we're gonna start head. calling you heisenberg yep. mm-hmm. i am the one who knocks so <laughs> yeah <laughs> well walter white for the same oh. reasons but obviously that's more fantastic. psychotic sure well then uh what would be your superpower Oh, uh, flying would be so cool. Flying, yeah, would be dig it. So cool, like that's even, one of my favorites too. I, ever since I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid, it's like I wanted to fly because everybody in that show could fly. Like even the weaklings could fly. It's like why can't we? we if could, Krillin this, can do it, if Krillin if, can fly, if Yamcha can fly, Yamcha like, can, fly. can fly. Let's be honest. Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, what would be your super weakness? Oh. Uh, I think, it, oh man. Because you gotta have one. If you have a superpower, you gotta have a super weakness. And it might pizza. as well be like bologna. P- pizza. I dig pizza, it. Pizza. Sure. I was gonna like, say bologna, but yeah, pizza works like too. Like whenever I fly over Domino's, like I just sink into the ground. And it's just like dive bomb. And I fall straight through and I'm just like, one medium bacon, please. <laughs> After, you know, it's all the broken spinal cords and stuff like is that, that. Is that your pizza of choice? Just a bacon? Oh, love bacon pizza. I love bacon anything. So maybe it's bacon. Maybe bacon's the weakness. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a pepperoni and black olive guy myself, but I understand. Uh, what? So what turns you on, either creatively, spiritually, emotionally, sexually? I love well-written dialogue. And, and to tie it back to Breaking Bad again, it's like that show is just so well-written. Mm-hmm. And like Quentin Tarantino movies, things like that. Something that's clever, but not too overly, you know, ridiculous ridiculous just something like you know that's interesting to listen to almost like maybe even you know just good dialogue in general like even like a, in a podcast when two people are just really on like kevin smith's podcast for example like smodcast him and uh what that show to me it's just it's just always fun to listen to because those yeah. like him and scott Mosier, his friend and, his and producer, uh hollywood babylon with ralph garman too yeah they that, i that, mean that, they that, really that, do he does fantastic jobs on all like, of his podcasts yeah, like the, just the chemistry they have and the ability to have a really great conversation that just goes somewhere and have it be constantly hilarious. You know, yeah. it's I love that kind of stuff. I love it when, it, I guess, good chemistry, good dialogue, uh, good dialogue, stuff like that for sure. Well, what turns you off? Oh, man. Punching puppies. For sure. <laughs> I don't think anything is more of a big turn off than punching puppies or, or spiders. Spiders. Fuck spiders. Oh come on! Some spiders are very cute. No, listen. I was watching. Uh, I was watching some Buffy the Vampire Slayer yesterday, and uh, we were like, it was an episode where like these weird ass demon spiders show up. I don't want to say too much, but it was just like, it came out of nowhere. There, there was like, they were almost like this big reveal. Like there's stuff in this box, and it happened to be these spiders. And when the spiders came out, I was just like, what the hell? Spiders? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Buffy? Spiders. We're done. We're done. Spiders. Like God, now nah, I'm done with the show. Fuck it. It's great, but no. Yeah, I just... Spiders suck. That's fantastic. Spiders and puppies. Fuck it. So, uh, what other talent, other than the ones you were obviously gifted with, would you like to have? I love to be more artistic with drawing. I, lo- I love to be a better artist in that uh, sense, because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm pretty well-rounded with everything else. But when it comes to like actual drawing... And like painting and stuff like that. I see so many artists, and I have so many artist friends now that are just so fantastic. And I wish I could do as well as them for sure. It's like I feel like, I feel like it's the one thing I'm not great at. But I guess like art's one of those like oh, it's whatever your interpretation is sort of thing. But you know, crappy sure. art's crappy art, and I can do crappy art. So <laughs> I just picked up Illustrator the other day to work on the Syria video. I made all those little stick figures in Illustrator. Yeah. I kind of really want to get a tablet now just so I can mess around yeah. with it a little more. It's like one of those impulse it's buys. Really like, cool. <laughs> it's really cool. It's really cool. I don't I don't need it. I'm not But when you it. see some of the stuff that like Bunny and Tora and, <laughs> and some of those people put out, I mean it blows your freaking mind. It's stuff like if there's yeah. any chance that I can come up with something half that close and the program automatically makes your circles actual full circles. Do you think oh. I drew those circles that straight? No, I did not. 
So it a cheater. Yeah, yeah. Auto aim for the win, baby. Yeah. Uh, so what's your favorite curse word? Oh, fuck. I love fuck. I think fuck's a great word that can be used impactfully. Fuck's a great word that can be used descriptively. I think fuck's a great adjective, it's, great verb, great noun. You know, it's just everything. It's probably my well, favorite word, word as well, just in general. Uh, I, I think uh, Boondock Saints hit the nail on the it's head just, with the diversity of the word. I mean, it's wonderful. Yeah, there's so much you can do with the word fuck. And so many people. And, and, and now it's just gone to a point where it's like accepted. You know, there was a time when you said the word fuck and everyone was like, whoa, calm Heads down. Heads turn. But now it's just like, yeah, but now it's just like, whatever. You hear it all the time. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a great word. It's a great word. Well, uh, what sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Oh, it's going to have to be this one. <laughs> I love that noise. I love that button. I love this GG button. It's best $10 I ever spent. And for those of you who are just like seeing it in the Let's Plays now that Ray's doing, you can thank me. I of told course. you by that. Uh, That's mine. Of course. Oh, thank or blame? <laughs> thank or blame? That is my question to you. Thank or yeah. blame? Uh... What does, totally what do you hate? What do I hate? Just in yeah. What general? Sa- no. What sound and noise do you hate? Uh, what sound do I hate? Oh, crying babies. Here's a little anecdote. Um, I was I work at a grocery store and uh, I was working checkout one day. I was working. I was cashiering. Some dude came in with his kid, and I swear to God, the kid was screaming bloody murder, right. the loudest I've ever heard a baby cry ever, and like so loud that it gave me a headache. Like and I'm just sitting here scanning. That is a very loud like, baby. I can't make it. I'm like I can't respond. I can't do anything. Anyway, this kid, this guy comes through with this stuff and he has grapes on the belly. It's a bag of grapes. And he's coming through. He's like, hey, can I see those? And he's giving them to my kid. My kid really wants. I'm like, your kid's crying for grapes. It's like he could. There could be so many other things you'd be crying for. I love grapes, but you know, people like grapes. People like but, people like grapes. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's like really. It's like I just hate the you know the total. It's like, I hate babies because they can't think logically yet. But I scan <laughs> through the, the grapes anyways. I hand them back to the guy. He hands them to the kid. Kid shuts up. He stops making any noise. <laughs> I hate like, babies because oh. they can't think logically yet. <laughs> it's, it's, I want that on a shirt. I, oh, man. It's just, I hate babies crying. I'm going to be the greatest dad ever. I hate babies crying. Uh, speaking of later on in life, where would you one day like to live? Oh, uh, it's so many cool places. I mean, I love Austin. I love Austin. I love visiting Austin. Uh, I just don't Where know if I, I am ever get... now. It's great. I, I don't know if I could ever get used to the constant heat, but mm. I'd be willing to try. I would totally be willing to live in Austin. Oh, it's about 80 it's degrees so... this week. I, and yeah. It's so wonderful. Yeah, and it's getting colder out now up here in New Hampshire because we have these things called seasons. Oh yeah, 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 those things. <laughs> and now I'm like not, and like I was, I thought I was ready for the cold, but now I'm not liking the cold. I'm like, man, I really, I really miss like that great Texas heat. So I don't know. Austin's pretty great, but I really enjoyed New York City the first time I went, and I'm going right. back next week for uh, NYCC. Right. And if I could live there comfortably, like if I had money to spare, and I could live in a nice place, a nice part of the city. You know, and not really worry about all the stupid, expensive stuff that goes on in New York. I don't know. I think I think that place is pretty cool too. So Absolutely. I guess it'd be a top up between a uh, toss up between NYC and and Austin for sure. I think I can support that decision. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you had a choice, how long would it take you to respawn after you died? <sighs> I'm gonna break the illusion real quick. We tried recording before. You and I tried to record this before, and we lost the recording for whatever. Yeah. Time. Yeah, and you asked me this the first time, and and I and I will be honest. Most of the answers I've given today have not been the same ones. Don't no, they know. haven't. It's been but pretty don't, nice. Don't feel like we're rehashing people. This is original content. But <laughs> you know, when you asked me this the first time, this is so philosophically skewed. Like it's just like oh, I love this so question. Many questions. Do I start I was my life so... over again? Do I? I was know? so happy when I came up with this question because it's hard to come up with the last question. It's hard to come up with a, yeah. a question that could lead to a thought very yeah. poignant and very yeah. nice to round up the show with. And yes, it does kind of put a lot of pressure yeah. on the guest. But again, like I've always said about these questions, it's not necessarily about the answers. 
It's about how yeah. you think about them. That's what it reveals about your personality, right. not your answers. Well, I mean, yeah. yes, your answers do to an extent, but <laughs> it's the process too. Definitely, and, and I, it's 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 such a big question. It's like, do I start my life over again? from day one do i respawn as somebody else it's like call of duty yeah. where your soul model is not exactly the same but sort of the same thing i don't know i would say 10 minutes just long enough for an extremely intensely long and sad sarah mclaughlin just like montage of my life i will remember you <laughs> do, 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 you do, do. will remember me something like that yeah like i would would like in this experience that and then it's like all right let's try it again so nice 10 minutes (laughs) dig it i think we can dig it well ladies and gentlemen i think we've come to the end of our show i can't pad this out any longer thank you so much for uh bearing with me and my lungs today thank you so much for bearing with my internet it seems to uh be getting a little bit better i i have some i bought some power line adapters it's better than last time yeah, and it seems to be working a little bit better, I hope. Uh, now I just need to get the ones that are actually gigabit connections. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. Uh, real quick, Ben, do you want to plug anything? Uh, uh, I guess the, the standard stuff. Um, follow the podcast on Twitter at BLTTP. Uh, check it out if you don't listen to it. Uh, BLTTP.com takes you to the iTunes page where you can check out some of the podcasts. There, there will have already been a link to it down in the description uh, the as well as the panel. Yeah, and I guess follow my own Twitter too at Ben A. Leonard, I guess, just to be extremely vain. Because I guess this is my part of the where I get to be vain, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When, when, when Franco is on here, he plugged his own Twitter. And when Connor decides to grace us with his presence, he can plug his own damn Twitter too. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. No, actually, he's going to – no, he's going to – you're going to tell him that? You're going to tell – Go. You're gonna tell him to plug, to plug his on Twitter. And he's like, "Well, did they do it?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "No, fuck that." Oh, follow yeah. a random account, Boobasaurus, or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. Now I'm done. Now you can end your show. <laughs> You've been watching this on YouTube.com/slash Tim Leftwich. My name is Tim Leftwich. You can now find the audio versions of all of these shows on SoundCloud.com/slash Tim Leftwich. Again, I'm trying to make it real easy for you to find me on any social media or format that might come up eventually i'm going to try and get it on itunes but we got to get those numbers up before then so thank you so much for watching everyone and as always we'll see you next time It's true. You won't. You very <laughs> much. You very most certainly won't. Until I have you back on a second just, time. Just when cut you do. that right there. Yeah. <laughs> just cut that right there. I won't. <laughs>